I'm delighted to welcome uh, Dr. David Seftel. And David, thanks for, for joining us today. David is the resident doctor at Golden Gate Fields. And Golden Gate Fields is one of the largest thoroughbred racetracks in the country. And they had a significant outbreak of COVID-19 at the racetrack. And David really took it upon himself a, a quite a heroic effort to outreach and, and treat. So, David, I'm going I'm to turn it over to you. Tell us about what, what happened, what you saw at Golden Gate Fields, and, and let's get into this, because I think this is really exciting to see real world and practically how this drug can really save lives. Um, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon for those folks that are uh, on this it's a privilege and a pleasure for me to be here to join with you and to share with you our experience and uh, perhaps indicate how this can be translated into other practices around the country and around the world. Golden Gate Fields is a beautiful community uh, made up of very passionate people that love horses and also take a tremendous amount of pride in the way that they support themselves. Uh, this is a community that was affected quite significantly by COVID-19. We had a 40% uh, out, uh, incidence outbreak in the community and I immediately looked at that and I said, what can we do to try to reduce the impact of this disease on these people? And at that particular point, I became aware of the JAMA article. So David, tell me, how did you, how did you hear about fluvoxamine? What was the path to hearing about? Because obviously the studies and a lot of this is brand new. What attracted you to hear about this? Uh, I have the uh, extraordinary privilege and pleasure to meet with uh, Steve Kurt. We invited him onto a webinar which I run for the Harvard Business School Association of Northern California as an alumnus. And Steve uh, presented such an extraordinary compelling case with both uh, science and passion. And it inspired me to look further, further and deeper into the background of fluvoxamine. And quite coincidentally, the JAMA article, uh, article uh, by Eric Lindsay that Angela has shared with you also came out. So a combination of incredibly good science together with a compelling clinical proposition uh, convinced me that I needed to take the next step and that is to try it in the individual patients to try and make a difference. Well, that's obviously a big step. It's one thing to hear about a potential treatment and then it's another to boldly enact that treatment. So obviously you were, how many uh, people at the racetrack had been diagnosed with COVID, were tested positive? Overall, over a series of uh, testing sessions, over 500 individuals uh, have been tested positive. In the initial cohort, there were 100, and then over subsequent weeks, uh, the positivity rate increased. What we did in this particular setting is we offered individuals at each particular stage the option treat or no treat. And initially, the uptake was lost. Only about 40% of individuals uh, but by the end of the process, when they saw the results, and the results very, very closely matched the results that have been shared with you by Angela, and that is 10% of individuals that were not treated ended up in hospital, and one of them ended up succumbing. So this was a very real world observational study in which we were able to confirm the data of Eric Lindsay and his colleagues. So moving forward now, you, you and, and how many people then did you administer fluvoxamine to of this group of people that tested positive at the track? We were able to reach out to 107 individuals, of which 60 received fluvoxamine, 47 received uh, the conventional uh, no treatment option. And uh, the data, current data indicates that 10% uh, of those that did not get fluvoxamine ended up in the hospital. The Voxamine group was extremely well tolerated. The medication had very few side effects, and those side effects that were present were principally things like nausea and abdominal pain and headaches, and they dissipated as individuals took more, um, took more doses and became acclimatized to this. I mean, ultimately, what we have here in Fluvoxamine is a very rare medication. Normally, medications that are used for COVID-19 maybe have one or two mechanisms of action. Voxamine doesn't have one, doesn't have two, doesn't have three. It has four different critical ways in which it can influence. Number one, it has a potent anti-inflammatory impact, and that's due to the signal one activation. Number two, it has a modest but important antiviral. 
But number three, impact positively a critical problem that makes people succumb to COVID and that is it prevents the blood clots that produce strokes, kidney failure and heart failure. But last, but even most, perhaps most importantly, it makes people feel better. It's an antidepressant. COVID-19 is an incredibly depressing experience. And ultimately, the brain controls every organ in the body, including the immune system. So our ability to offer essentially four silver bullets with fluvoxamine, I think contributes to the fact that we've seen such remarkable outcomes and such low hospitalization rates. So clearly real world success with a, a reasonable, you know, data bank proof points of the, the people that were there at the track. Why do you think as COVID is raging right now and you know, we're waiting for vaccines, which are going to take a while, and it's clearly evident that we also need treatments in a parallel course, why are more doctors not prescribing fluvoxamine at this time? If they don't know about it, they can't take action. And this is where this wonderful community of, of creators and influencers can help us. Doctors need to be encouraged. Doctors need to see through the information fog. I'm based in San Francisco, we always have fog. But the reality is there's an enormous information fog around what works and what doesn't. And the creators on this meeting have the capacity to help us defog the environment. This is not hydroxychloroquine. This is a drug that has potent and powerful and valuable effects. And patients can reach out to their physicians, break through that fog, and encourage them to learn more. And of course, we will be uh, helping to provide physician information, but it's got to be a bilateral exercise. But well, essentially, what we're is you guys out there have to be our fog fighters. Well, no, that's great, Dr. Septo. So obviously we do have great creators and influencers on this chat. What do, you, what do you hope, what would you ask them to do? What is the most important thing that they can do to help out under this scenario? They need to share this information with the general population. They need to share it with vulnerable communities. They need to encourage these individuals to contact their physician, either directly or indirectly. We ask them about fluvoxamine and to provide them with the links to the JAMA article, provide them with all of the evidence that has been garnered and say, is this right for me? Can you consider this for me, for my family members, for myself in the setting of COVID-19?